A federal judge has overturned portions of a jury's verdict against five current or former police officers convicted of civil rights violations in deadly shootings on a New Orleans bridge after Hurricane Katrina. In his ruling Thursday, U.S. District Judge Kurt Engelhardt said jurors didn't hear sufficient evidence to convict Sergeant Kenneth Bowen of a charge he stomped on 40-year-old Ronald Madison, a mentally disabled man, after another officer shot and fatally wounded him on the Danziger Bridge after the 2005 storm. TSA agents are hitting the interstates to apparently fight terrorism with a visible intermodal prevention and response, or VIPER program. Tuesday, October 19, Tennessee was first to deploy Viper simultaneously at five way stations and two bus stations across the state. Agents are recruiting truck drivers, like Rudy Gonzalez, into the first observer highway security program to say something if they see something. Checkpoints, and having to show your papers? Sound familiar? Now, citizen spies? It's getting quite claustrophobic in these United States of America, it seems. Say no. S-978, a new bill in Congress, makes it a felony to post videos that contain copyright infringing music, with up to five years in prison for violators. The clever folks at Fight for the Future have noticed that this law would have put Justin Bieber in jail, since he launched his career by posting videos of himself singing R&B tunes in violation of copyright. Statewide earthquake drill, the Great California Shakeout, took place Thursday morning October 20th. More than 8 million Californians were expected to participate. From classrooms to offices to a Target store in Northridge, people were asked to drop, cover and hold on as the minute struck. On a day when the state holds its largest earthquake drill in history, two quakes shake up the Bay Area. The quakes were just a mile apart. The first, a 4.0, hit at 2.41 p.m., then, at about 8 to 16 p.m. another quake, which was a 3.8. Both earthquakes hit in Berkeley on the UC Berkeley campus. Some people say the aftershock felt bigger and others say the opposite. They were very similar. Occupy Wall Street protesters may get a new platform to voice their opinions after MTV's The Real World reality TV show posted a casting call reaching out to supporters of the movement. The casting call, posted on Monday this week by Real World production company Benham Slash Murray on website Craigslist, stated they were seeking cast members to tell their unique stories and specifically asks people if they are part of the Occupy Wall Street movement. In just over a week, The Dark Knight Rises a film featuring a fictional one-percenter, Mr. Wayne, and his superhero alter ego, Batman, is scheduled to begin filming on Wall Street, only two blocks from Zuccotti Park, which the Occupy Wall Street protesters have been using as their home base for the last month. The film's producers have told city officials that they want to shoot during the last weekend of October and the first weekend of November, and that would inject a new element of chaos into a neighborhood already unsettled by the protests and the attendant security, gawkers and news media. The Wisconsin judge who recently ruled that we have no right to own a cow or drink its milk resigned to join one of Monsanto's law firms. Yep, he sure did. Former Judge Patrick J. Fiedler now works for Axley Bernelson, LLP, which defended Monsanto against a patent infringement case filed by Australian firm, Genetic Technologies, Limited in early 2010. A military helicopter landed in a northeast D.C. neighborhood Wednesday, D.C. police confirmed. It is being said that mechanical issues led to the landing near 11th and Gallatin Streets. And, that both radios went out during a routine exercise, and rather than flying without radios and with limited visibility, the pilot decided to put the chopper down in Fort Circle Park. John Cossage will sign a new executive order on dangerous wild animals. Earlier this year, Cossage allowed an exotic animals ban to lapse, saying it was unenforceable.
an official of the Humane Society of the U.S. contended that Tuesday's incident involving Zanesville exotic animal owner Terry Thompson could have been avoided had Kosich extended Strickland's order. A large earthquake has struck near Rural Island this morning, with a tsunami warning provisionally issued for New Zealand. New Zealand's National Crisis Management Center has been activated after the 7.3 magnitude quake struck at 6.57 a.m. today, at a depth of 16 kilometers. The U.S. Navy said on Thursday it was discharging 64 sailors, 49 of them from the aircraft carrier that buried Osama bin Laden at sea, for allegedly using or distributing drugs. Most of the sailors, who are assigned to the aircraft carrier USS Carl Vinson, nuclear submarine USS San Francisco and a floating fueling dock, were supposedly caught using, possessing or selling the designer drug Spice, the Navy said. Bin Laden was said to have been buried at sea from the Carl Vinson in May after the Al-Qaeda leader was allegedly killed in a raid by U.S. Navy SEALs on his Pakistan hideout. OK, friends, buried at sea is not an Islamic tradition but a maritime tradition. And bin Laden has been reported dead no less than nine times. These sailors no doubt have knowledge of something perhaps never happening on the Carl Vinson. And, strangely, these discharges come after the death of Navy SEALs whom were also on the raid on bin Laden's shanty house compound. Looking through walls is no longer something we read about in comic books or watch in Superman movies. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Lincoln Laboratory has presented new radar technology that would allow humans to see through a solid wall. Scientists said that organs grown in genetically modified pigs could be transplanted into humans in as soon as two years. Pittsburgh University scientists say that a trial transplanting pig corneas into humans will eye problems could begin as early as 2013. With new genetically modified pigs becoming available that are likely to improve the outcome of cellular and corneal xenotransplantation further, we believe that clinical trials will be justified within the next two to three years, the authors wrote in the journal The Lancet. The Obama administration on Friday took another step toward allowing BP to return to the Gulf of Mexico, approving the first oil drilling plan for the company there since the explosion that sank the Deepwater Horizon rig more than a year ago. New Poly explained that the team uncovered several properties of Skype that can track not only users' locations over time but also their peer-to-peer -peer file sharing activity. The U.S. Army wants dream sequences to become reality. In an Army-backed experiment called Power Dreaming, Naval Hospital Bremerton in Washington State will help traumatized troops battle their nightmares, with soothing, digitally made dreams crafted in virtual worlds. No, this is not the script for the sequel to Inception. The research project is in its early planning and is not expected to launch until next year but it is picking up momentum. Last week, the Army awarded almost half a million dollars to a consulting company for help developing the experiment. NextGov is reporting that the FBI will begin rolling out its Next Generation Identification, or NGI Facial Recognition Service as early as this January. Once NGI is fully deployed and once each of its approximately 100 million records also includes photographs, it will become trivially easy to find and track Americans. NGI expands the FBI's IAFIS criminal and civil fingerprint database to include multimodal biometric identifiers such as iris scans, palm prints, photos, and voice data. The Bureau is planning to introduce each of these capabilities in phases over the next two and a half years, starting with facial recognition in four states, Michigan, Washington, Florida, and North Carolina, this winter. Can you tell me why they are protesting on Wall Street? I'd be glad to. Is it because the banks took big bonuses and dividends, were bailed out and now people are losing their homes and not one banker has been prosecuted? That is part of it. What is the entire story? The banks were bailed out, for about $27 trillion, 
according to Dylan Radigan of MSNBC and other reliable sources. I thought it was only 750 billion. That was the top money approved by Congress. The Federal Reserve and the FDIC sent the rest to banks and corporations across the world. The American taxpayer is on the hook. How much was paid back? We have no way of knowing. Why is that? The Fed won't tell us. They are a private bank. Okay. But, what about the rest of the story? The banks across the world continue to steal trillions in bonuses and dividends, and are currently being bailed out in Europe, where they are on the verge of collapse and meltdown. How do they steal the money? They use derivatives and credit default swaps. What is a derivative and credit default swap? It is a bet. Is that legal? Yes. So why is it stealing? Because the banks put them on their balance sheets as assets or real money, knowing they will default. They take bonuses and dividends against these, and that is fraud, misallocation of funds, conspiracy, to name a few. Then, when the swaps actually default, the asset becomes toxic and worthless. The bank is then broke, but the money is gone. Gee, this sounds terrible. It gets worse. The banks across the world are intertwined and have tremendous exposure to sovereign defaults via swaps. So, if one country defaults, it can spread like a disease to other banks across the world, and you have another credit meltdown. Will it come to America? If it happens, of course it will. Why do they allow this, and not arrest the bankers? Bankers don't go to jail. They own and run politicians who are just puppets for them. I am depressed. So am I. But it goes beyond banks, to corporations bribing politicians directly, using the word lobbying, instead of bribery. The corporations get legislation passed that in some cases, they help write. This legislation allows them to outsource jobs, benefiting from tax loopholes and offshoring and generally bringing down wages and limiting competition. So, the people vote, but are not represented. It sounds to me like the entire system is corrupt. Yes, it is. Why is this allowed? Because the people are sleeping. What can be done to fix it? Maybe the Occupy Wall Street movement is the beginning of that. We shall see.